the vestibulocochlear nerve, the eighth cranial nerve. This is a sensory nerve with two components. The vestibular component supplies the vestibular apparatus, which is essentially the balance mechanism. The cochlear component supplies the cochlea, which houses the hearing organ. Let us begin by testing the vestibular mechanism. The patient may have already complained of dizziness, vertigo, nausea or loss of balance. Part of the balance assessment was also ascertained when posture and gait were observed in the assessment of the peripheral nervous system. Also, during the examination of the eyes, you may have noticed the presence of nystagmus. A good test for assessing the vestibular apparatus is Hall Pike's manoeuvre. Position the patient on the examination couch, sitting along its length, so that when you get them to lie horizontally, the head will extend back over the edge of the couch. Explain the procedure to the patient and instruct them that it should be done in a brisk pace. Get them to lie horizontally, allowing their head to hang over the edge. Then turn their head to one side and tell them to fix their eyes on an object for a few seconds. When the patient is in this position, check their eyes for nystagmus. At the end, ask them if they experienced any undue dizziness. You should repeat this test to ascertain whether the nystagmus is sustained or fatigable. Another method of assessing the vestibular system is caloric testing. It involves instilling cold and warm water in the external auditory meatus to try and induce nystagmus. This is normally performed in a test laboratory. Now we test the auditory component of the eighth cranial nerve. A simple but crude method of getting an initial impression of the patient's hearing is to rub your fingers together from some distance to see if you can both hear it. Alternatively, whisper a few words a couple of feet away from the patient's ear. Now using the tuning fork, assess for conductive or sensory neural deafness. Use a vibrating tuning fork frequency of 512 Hz. Rini's test makes a comparison between air conduction and bone conduction of sound. In a normal person, sound conducted to the ear through air is better than that conducted through bone. Gently strike or pinch the tuning fork and place its base on the mastoid process. Ask the patient what they hear. They should say a buzzing, vibrating or humming noise. Then ask the patient to tell you when they no longer feel this sensation. Immediately bring the prongs of the fork close to the ear. They should still be able to hear it. If they don't, this means that something is blocking the transmission of sound through air. Causes of conduction deafness include earwax, middle ear diseases, or loss of elasticity in the ossicular chain. Weber's test assesses the transmission of sound through bone to both ears simultaneously, so that a comparison between the two ears can be made. Place the base of the vibrating tuning fork on the forehead or the vertex of the head. Ask the patient if they feel the buzzing sensation equally in both ears. If the sound is not equal on both sides, this may signify two possibilities. That the weak side has some kind of sensory neural deficit, or the stronger side appears to be so because of a blockage in the external auditory meatus, such as earwax. You may repeat this test, this time with the patient's fingers blocking both ears, to confirm your findings. Make a comparison between your findings from the Weber's and Rini's test to decide which of the above possibility is more likely, that is conduction or sensory neural deficit. Lesions of the eighth cranial nerve includes acoustic neuroma, otitis media, 
labyrinthitis, and tumors, particularly at the cerebellopontine angle. Also, consider fractures of the petrous portion of the temporal bone. In sensory neural deafness, consider autosclerosis, Meniere's disease, or trauma.